again, got a good performance there again against Down. Um, I heard a few people saying that Mayo was the draw everyone wanted. Um, so, you know, that kind of hurt maybe a few of our players as well and drove us on a bit. But, um, you know, no matter what day we go out, we're, we're looking to get a performance and, you know, play to the best of our ability, you know. I suppose on to the Dublin game the last day, um, again, everyone was writing. We tried to um, just focus on ourselves and bringing our own game and trying to stamp our own authority. In the Donegal, impressive, I suppose. I suppose we both have young, um, we're both emerging teams. It's both our first, you know, of a uh, very impressive, uh, you know, a good system and stuff, but we fight. It's every player's dream to play in an All Ireland final, and it really, that'll be my view. Yeah, that's Mayo's centre back, Donald Vaughan. Now, uh, Joe, he's uh, been. Uh, you, reckon, you reckon, Joe, that no, Mayo do it a bit no, more there's voluntarily? There's, no, there's no force in this. I mean, one of the linchpins of Mayo's strategy is tactical fouling. I mean, on the kick out, they'll hold the man who wins the ball. They'll simply hold him around the waist, all the freeze given. Then they'll confront him for a wee second or two just to make sure the play is held up. You can watch it here. This is this is just endemic throughout the game. So they both hold him just enough to give away a free. They'll stand in front of him. They'll block the free off then for a second, turn their back, then they're at it again. And it's it's very, very, very disruptive. It's also mm. extremely frustrating. At no stage were Dublin's halfbacks, midfielders, half forwards able to get out of their defence. These aren't attempts at tackling, it's just a systematic policy of dragging down. And if somebody like McMenamin had a weapon surge, he was simply dragging most of the yellow card. But I think the people happened on 27 times throughout the game, and it's a case of impact. On because, I mean, there were three points in it. Dublin simply were unable to build momentum. Out. I think that Mayo were in a similar sort of a, a journey to ourselves. And I think it might be fair to say that what was going on in Mayo wasn't enough to get them over the line either. And James Horne's come in, he's consolidated. He's won two provincial titles in a row as well. So obviously, their players are starting to gravitate towards an All-Ireland as well. You know, I don't see them as favourites and I don't see us as favourites or underdogs. I think it's very much a coming together of two new teams with a similar approach in the last two years. And it is the makings of a great game. Mayo are going to come into this game with unbelievable hunger and I would like to think that my players are going to come into it with the same hunger and you know something has to give in the final. Fantastic victory by Jim McGuinness and his team. Oh well I mean obviously as a Donegal man first and foremost it'll mean absolutely everything you know. Uh, my bond is with the players really if they can do it and they can get their hands on that medal uh, I'll just be absolutely delighted for them. There'll be no fear and there'll be no apprehension in All-Ireland Final Day and there'll be no um, nervousness either. We have a job to do and it's just a matter of going out and trying to execute that to the best of your ability. And if they give it everything in relation to that, everybody will be happy regardless of what the result. OK, and those are the thoughts of Johnny Gall's Jim McGuinness. But now, let's hear from the Mayo manager, James Horan. Now, in many ways, the backgrounds of the two men are very similar. Both players in the past. They took the managerial reins two years ago when neither county was going particularly well in football. In Mayo's case, they lost an All-Ireland qualifier to Longford in 2010 before Horan stepped in. But now, of course, they're in sight of an All-Ireland title. And Mayo have beaten the All-Ireland champions Dublin and James Horan's team. They will play Donegal in the All-Ireland final. It'll be a first ever All-Ireland final between Mayo and Donegal. You know, there's something different about this team, um, the way we play, um, the commitment and, and, and the real drive that these guys have. You know, we came from 2010 where, where, where things weren't great and we've progressed and developed really, really well. And, and this, this team is charting its own course. So um, we're just looking forward to see and maximising what we can do and seeing where that takes us. Back towards Holland, who's been kicking very well so far. And he has kicked another beauty. There's nothing like playing. There, there's really nothing like playing. But managing is, is, is the next best, I would say. Um, just being involved with the players, seeing how they prepare, seeing the commitment that they give, and, and seeing people playing at the top end of their sport and the top end of their range, it, it, there's a huge kick out of that. You obviously learn from the, from, from the past, and, and I've been involved in a few All-Ireland Finals, as is Jimmy Nallon, as part of the backroom team, he's been involved in four, so there's a lot of experiences that, that you, know, you can choose to use it whichever way you want. You can choose to ignore it or choose to use it as a, as a learning and an education, and that's what we're doing. So, uh, some of the things, you know, in match build up and, and even the way that you prepare the week before a game, we'll, we'll be using from some of Jimmy's knowledge, and, and hopefully it'll, it'll help us be better prepared than, than, than before. And, and, you know, that we get the performance that we, we think we can give. And there's a Mayo player injured on the far side of the field, it's Andy Moran. 
there he turned is it the knee it is the knee is it anything to do with a knee and straight away there is concern of course when you see Andy going down and against down when you when you saw his, the hand going up uh, of course your, your heart jumps a little bit but uh, by the way even by the time the subs had come on um, we, we had moved on you know we've been probably the heaviest scoring team in the in the country um, in the championship so far per, per game so um, look at we've got a few little things that we do that, that that we're comfortable that if we play like we can that we'll uh, we'll score enough. You know, Donegal have been mightily impressive um, all year. You know, we, we, we've seen a number of their games. Um, they've played a lot more of them than, than us, so um, they've been improving as well, and, 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 and they're playing quite well up there. So, um, but, but, you know, we're looking forward to the, the challenge and, 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 and that it, they present and um, just seeing what we can do. I suppose what we need to do is, is play as well as we can and um, see where that takes us. You know, against Dublin, we, we played well in parts. We, we, we made a lot of unforced turnovers. Our, our skill set wasn't what it, what it needed to be as regards to some of the hand passing and kick passing. So we're just looking to improve the basics and fundamentals of our game and just get better and better in every single game we play. So um, we'd be confident that if we can play like we can, we'll, we'll, we'll go very close. Yeah, that's the Mayo manager, James Horden, and I suppose Pat Spillane. In as much as this is a fascinating challenge between two counties and two teams, it's also that between the two managers. Well, yeah, because as Joe alluded to earlier on, it, it, it's, the mod it's about modern, ma modern young managers nowadays. That's where the game has evolved, and these are two of the best, there's no doubt about it. And like I said, they took over two counties who were not quite on their knees, but certainly two counties which the future wasn't mm. particularly mm. bright. But what they did was th they set out their philosophy, uh, and the players have bought into that philosophy in terms of commitment, in terms of... Now, I suppose, in a way, they're slightly different. I think uh, Horn is, is more... Horn's game plan around Mayo is more about the, the principles of the game. So when you lose possession, everyone becomes a defender when you... Yes, you know, yeah. and, and maybe a lot of their attacking play is a bit more off the cuff. Donegal are more micromanaged because everything, nothing is left to, to tell. Yeah. You know, everything is, is, is analysed, everything is rehearsed, everything is practised in detail. And you can see that in Donegal. This is what probably one of the dangers in Donegal in the sense that because it's so much micromanagement, whatever, if something did go wrong and say they fell behind by four or five points, you and just you have wonder, have, the, can, have yeah. their leadership, can they read and adapt? But there's no doubt about it. What these two players have done to their respect, or these two managers have done to their respective counties has been absolutely phenomenal. And like he, they've got 30 guys who have parked, in particularly Donegal for two years, that Jimmy McGuinness has got 30 lads who have parked their life for the last two years mm. and given their complete commitment and sacrifices to the cause of Donegal football. That's remarkable. Joe? Well, you know, they're, they're, they're like two choreographers, you know, and that's what you've got to be nowadays. Players give you a honeymoon period. There's a honeymoon period for the manager when he comes in. They'll put their shoulder to the wheel. They'll do whatever is yeah. required. They'll train 14 times a week if they see it working yeah. and if they believe in it. Manager creates the platform. I think they're both equally micromanaged. It's just that Donegal are a bit further down the road. Right, yeah. The Mayo don't leave anything to chance any longer. And so there's going to be a fascinating clash between the two managers as well today. There surely is. OK, we're headed for a break here on the programme. But uh, just before that, let me tell you about the Jubilee team presentation, which took place down on the pitch just a short while ago. Now that was the Meads team of 1987 who of course were crowned All-Ireland champions in that year and that was for the first time in 20 years. They beat Cork that year 114 to 11 points. Some famous names on that team. The Lions of course, Jerry McEntee, Bernard Flynn and of course also one Colm O'Rourke who scored the only goal of that game. And of course we're going to see how that uh, old knee of Columns is bearing up these days because he now has to dash back up here to join us again in our Croke Park studio. We're back again shortly. Welcome back again to Croke Park on All Ireland Final Day. Time to get some further views on today's final. We're going to head down pitch side now. Marty Morrissey is there and he has got two special guests to talk to. 
Indeed, I have, uh, Michael. I'm joined by two Antonys, one from Mayo and one from Donegal, two legends of the game of Gaelic football, Anthony Finnerty and Anthony Malloy. Anthony, if I can start uh, this, Anthony, uh, about Mayo. There seems to be a calmness in the county. I'm sure there's nobody at home, but there is a quiet expectation, isn't there? Yeah, there's a quiet expectation this time round. Uh, very, very, very little hype. OK, we had a great, great clamour for tickets, but I think it's all about the match, it's all about the team, and we've kept the hype very much down this year. Anthony Malloy, winning captain 20 years ago, the buzz around Donegal has just been fantastic, hasn't it? It's been unbelievable, Mark, you know, and uh, I think it started, you know, the day we beat Cork here, you know, way back, and uh, total carnival all together up there, and uh, the pre-match hype has been unreal, like, and it's great for me this time around because, you know, I wasn't as nothing like this, you know, tw 20 years ago because we were sort of sheltered from that. Yeah. Anthony, as the weeks went by, OK, Donegal started as hot favourites, but there's a growing confidence that maybe Mayo can win this All-Ireland. There's a, a, a bit of a, a confidence growing nationwide. Yeah, I like to look at this Mio team. I think they're 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 well organised. They play a lovely st brand of football, and to me, they look very very comfortable in Croke Park. Uh, they're scoring well. They're moving the ball very very well, and I give us a right chance here today. Anthony, from your point of view, will there be a change of tactics from Donegal? Will Mark McHugh still be rambling around picking up the loose breaking ball? No, I don't think so, Marty. I think you know Jim McGinnis will stick to the same game plan that he has stuck with all year, and uh, you know. I know that we're going into the match as hot favours and all that, and I don't think that will affect us one way or another. He's coming here, he's going to have the same sack, same game plan, the same system, and it's going to be the same thing today, Marty. From the two Antonys from Donegal from Mayo, we look forward to hearing your thoughts at halftime. Thank you indeed for joining thanks, us. Marty. It's back to Michael. Marty, thanks very much. As we said earlier on in the programme, people watching uh, this transmission today all around the globe. Just want to say a quick hello to uh, Kevin Sheridan, who is originally from Tully Duff in Kilmaine in County Mayo. He is watching over in Perth in Australia. And uh, Kevin, that comes from your granddad, Paddy, and indeed all of the family in Kilmaine. Colin Work has joined us again after being down pitch side. Great reception, Colin, for you, and, and rightly so. What a yeah. footballer. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a nice thing, I said it before, a nice tradition. It's nice to get back with your mates. We had a day out on Friday, we had a lunch together, which went yes. on to the late hours with 650 other people, and we had a brilliant day, and it's lovely to be back with them again. I think the lads would know it. You know, there, there's a bond there when you've been through a lot with players, and, you know, they're friends for life. You might meet them, every day of the week or every week of the year, but there is something special there with them. It's also a reminder that ordinary teams and ordinary fellows don't win all Ireland. I mean, that was a mighty team. There was some great